नमस्ते मेरा नाम है चंद्रजीत मुखर्जी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल्सो दी फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द सेल इन फीचर्स क्लासेस टुडे इज लेक्चर विल बी डीलिंग विथ अनदर फीचर ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड दैट इज द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज अ फेडरल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट्स अ फेडरल सिस्टम विद अ यूनिटरी बायस नाउ वॉट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट देर टू काइंड ऑफ areas that you need to understand we will go into details about the features of a federal system and the features of a unitary system when we, when we reach the second part of the book but as far as this chapter is concerned here we have to understand the basics of federation or the basics of unitariness unitary system in a federation you have a proper power distribution of vertical silos is there is a proper power distribution between center and state there is a vertical power distribution and therefore there is a separation of power so separation of power is based on the power distribution which is vertically power distribution so union have a separation of power that is there are executed there are legislatures in at the union level the same thing applies at the state level all right so separation of power applies on the on the on the power distribution which is there in the federational system now in india we have a center and a state so we have two governments this is one feature of a federation second there is a proper division of power between center and state so for example the seventh schedule which talks about the three various the distribution of legislative powers is precisely uh, uh, clearly demarcates the division of power between center and state the written constitution is also a feature of a of a federal system or a federal feature because it clearly demarcates which power is lying with which institution as i mentioned earlier also that the constitution is a document which provides the power mapping this is what we are talking about next supremacy of the constitution absolutely yes it's a federal feature whatever the power is being given to separate institutions at the vertical level at the vertical distribution we have to follow that we cannot challenge the constitution per se the supremacy of the constitution cannot be challenged rigidity of the constitution that means it is not so easy to amend the constitution bicameralism wherein the union parliament will have to consider the voices raised in the rajya sabha which is nothing but the representation of the states so that is also a kind of a check and balance this is also a part of a federation because you see as i mentioned federation has two layers center and states in a vertical arrangement now if the states are being represented in the rajya sabha and the union parliament you have to consider lok sabha will have to consider rajya sabha for almost every possible bills that are going to be passed then that means we are considering we are uh, we are considering the importance of the states and therefore it is a part of the federation next independent judiciary independent judiciary is also a part of also a part of a federation of course because because it helps us to 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 ensure that the center will never encroach into the areas of the states otherwise the judiciary will intervene and stop the center from making such laws which are in the state list domain this is one example there could be many other so basically the judicial in independence or independence of judiciary will ensure the essence of federation all right now when it comes to the unitary features that is there in the constitution so india is having the mix of both and also it has it, it is at the same time it is biased towards center and let me let me discuss the features uh, the unitary features in the indian constitution number 1 we have a strong federation as i mentioned it's a unitary bias so we have a strong federation unitary bias despite being a federation this is a concept which we have taken from the canadian constitution so the strong center we have a single constitution we have a single citizenship we have a single constitution for both center and state a single citizenship we have for the entire nation flexibility of the constitution the rigidity of the constitution was a part of federation flexibility is a part of unity why say for example there are certain issues which are not been mentioned which are not mentioned in the state list then this then the flexibility principle can be applied and the center will be given that permission that 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 power to make laws on those areas which are not mentioned in the state list say for or, in, or not even in the content list say for example article 248 the residuary power everything which is mentioned in the residuary powers are something which is not mentioned in the other three lists and therefore it is the flexible arrangement which empowers the union parliament to make laws on those subjects next the integrated judiciary we don't have a supreme court in every state all india services is another example of a unitary biasness and most importantly the appointment of the governors now this is a topic appointment by the governors who appoint the president appoints so basically the center appoints the Uh, uh, the governors of a state and uh, we have so many issues with uh, the governor and the chief minister in the past one or two years uh, in west bengal per se we have issues with in, uh, with the governor and uh, chief minister in tamil nadu also so basically the governors are the representatives of the state they are the eyes and ears of the central government who are appointed at the different uh, at different states and it connects the conduct it connects both center and states and the question is 
if the state government is just the opposite of what you have in the central government then there will be a possibility of conflict between the chief ministers and the governor increases it is very simple mathematics the simple politics and therefore it is it, it can be said it can be said that the governors are a political post now the entire constitution article 1 never ever discussed or defined the word federation in fact instead it dis it, 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 it defines india as a union of india now this union of india which is mentioned in article 1 is actually composed of two important concepts number one the federation that we have in india is based on the principles of holding together that means the states have not surrendered their powers to the central on their own it is the center which has taken the powers from the centers and this can be understood with the past history that we had right that we had. the entire freedom struggle the how the princely states uh, performed uh, how disintegrated the indian society was there are many important reasons based on which we adopted this principle of holding together it's like a joint family the head of the family is holding together all these states this is not the case with the united states in the united states states have themselves join this center so in united states the states have more power compared to the states and the second part of the union of india the second part is that the states do not have the right to secede the states cannot move out of the union <coughs> which is precisely the reason that we have adopted the concept of holding together in a federation in this kind of an arrangement casey weirs often used to say in the constitution to be a quasi federal constitution even glanville austin used to say it's a cooperative federation so it depends upon which angle which approach you look at it and this is what you need to understand the one thing i can ensure that yes indian constitution is a federation federal constitution or a federation but it there are many points many areas approximately i can count 20 to 25 areas wherein you will understand that the central that the constitution is central biased let me give you one example before i wrap up the class for today the best example would be for uh, the amendment procedure the amendment procedure cannot be initiated by the states or the state assembly it can only be initiated by the central assembly uh, that is the that is the union parliament either of the house Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, but the state assemblies are not allowed to initiate even they are not considered uh, uh, in the amendment procedure unless and until we are about to we are with the union government is about to amend some federal uh, uh, subjects so for example if union government is about to change or amend the procedure of the election of the president or the union government is about to amend the uh, the seventh schedule the lists the distribution of powers and as these things are being amended the state assemblies are not even considered you know during the procedure for an amendment bill to be passed so you see there are areas wherein you will see that there is a central biasness and it is based on some past records it is it has some legacy it has a genesis that is what you need to understand something which is not mentioned in the book you have to you have to find you have to find those facts those areas based on which the constitution makers thought about writing a constitution which will be central biased so that's it for today i hope you are enjoying the class please do subscribe to the channel thank you